some things are happening here. Seattle Seahawks at 21. Mm-hmm. As I've mock draft drafted to the Seattle Seahawks in the past, what, uh, before we rejigged the board, this felt like a great place for them to attack Edge. Yes. To help Frank Clark there. Now, we've moved some of those Edge defenders down as we have more information on yes. them. We've moved a few safeties up. We have. Two safeties who have legitimate free safety skills make up two out of the next four players on our draft board. So the next players on our draft board, wide receiver J.J. Arcega-Whiteside from Stanford, Cody Ford, the guard slash tackle from Oklahoma. We always know Seattle could use some help on the offensive line, Mm -hmm. but the two safeties, Nasir Adderley from Delaware and Darnell Savage from Maryland, legit free safety skills. Yeah. Earl Thomas is gone. Mm Mm-hmm. They play this cover three scheme. Everybody's trying to duplicate what they they need a true free safety. Yes. What if they go free safety here? What if? I I mean, if you really are high on these guys, and we are high on these, I don't think Tedrick Thompson, Delano Hill, Bradley McDougal is really stopping me from attacking that position in the draft with how valuable we've seen it be in that defense. So I'm going safety. I, our Sega Whiteside, by the way, pairing him with Russell Wilson would be beautiful mm-hmm. because you do need that's that quarterback that's going to take some chances, throw those tight window throws, and let a guy go up and make plays. Russell Wilson does that extremely well. Not just jump balls, like actually gives guys opportunities to make plays. I love that fit potentially. But man, I'm looking at this defense. Nasir Adderley's free safety skills are great. Darnell Savage's ugh, athleticism is great. Now I just don't know which one to pick. You, well, you got to, Steve. The, your, your clock's ticking down. The Ravens are sitting there at 22 ready to hand in their card. I have 10 card. minutes here. All right. I'm going to Sear Adderley from Delaware. He's going to step in at free safety for the Seattle Seahawks. He has the type of range to be at least 80% of Earl Thomas, mm-hmm. okay. which they haven't had every time Earl Thomas has been hurt. So that's a bit of a curveball. I, I don't think that's happened in a whole lot of mock drafts. But no. I'm going Adderley, the free safety, to the Seattle Seahawks. And like I said, I don't. the safety group there is not stopping me from drafting a safety if I think Nazir Adderley has true center field skills. And I, I mean, he does. We've seen it at Delaware. Freakish range, freakish burst to cover the seam there in that cover three. I think he's a fit for that defense. There you have it. That's it. So 22. Ravens are up. Baltimore Ravens on the clock. And I love the idea of beefing up the offensive line in Baltimore getting another guy in there at guard, a dominant run blocker in someone like Cody Ford. Oh, no. To then just solidify that offensive line, go five across and guys that, and just bully teams in the run game because that's how you have to play. We've said the run game is not as valuable, but when you can utilize your quarterback in a system that the Ravens ran a season ago, you saw how much that can transform your rushing attack to a viable. So you're never going to be the Kansas City Chiefs with a rushing attack in the NFL. You're never going to be that level of offense, but you can still run a top 10 offense with a run heavy approach. And with Lamar Jackson, I think that is the way you want to go. Receiver gets devalued in a system like that. Offensive lineman gets valued. Cody Ford, the best offensive lineman available on our board right now, is the pick. You're He's all 22nd about that. on our big board, so 22nd to 22nd. The perfect value. That is perfect value right there. Um, you are all about that build in the run game. In Baltimore, in Baltimore, or at least buying into it. Yes. If you, I mean, if you have to, if you're going to commit to it, then completely buy in. Mm-hmm. So that part makes sense. That's leaving me with some question marks here. The Houston Texans at yes, 23. I really did just. You hose took you. you took our last first round tackle or guard off the board. Mm-hmm. There's a first round center remaining in El- Elton Jenkins. So there's. But you got Nick Martin. Yeah, that's probably the one. Nick Martin's right. at center, right? Yeah. So Houston, who we continue to pencil in at least an offensive tackle, most likely an offensive tackle, now has no good first-round options. The next guy on our board is Greg Little. We have a second-round grade on him. I don't want to stretch and reach for him. It has left a couple interesting scenarios here, though. Um, by the way, you may have noticed Montez Sweat is not off the board for us. That Montez Sweat and Rashawn Gary, mm-hmm. are they the two biggest names that are not off the board yet that based off our board, might not make it off the board here. Yeah, I, I think those are the two biggest names. Obviously, besides the quarterbacks, in terms of Drew Locke, Daniel Jones, Drew, could Drew also go Daniel first Jones. round. But I don't think maybe a run, Maybe Josh Jacobs could be in the first round conversation if a team really wants to go end up doing that. But yes, Rashawn Gary, Montez Sweat, we have second round grades on at the moment. That's just where we see those players at. So you might not hear their names called in our first mm-hmm. round mock draft. I'm going to debate right now for the Houston Texans between J.J. Arcega-Whiteside Big-bodied receiver opposite DeAndre Hopkins with Will Fuller still Mm -hmm. in the, you know, not in the slot, but still as that deep threat. Yeah. I I think there's a way for those three to Mm -hmm. mix. 
However, I also like the idea of tight end in the Houston scheme. Either way, I think for it's got to be an offensive pick that's either going to protect Deshaun Watson or give him somebody to throw to. In this sense, I think our Sega Whiteside might be a little bit too close to DeAndre Hopkins stylistically. Okay. So I'm going Hawkinson. So I'm taking, I think, I know you, you're not going to ever draft a tight end in the first round, Mike, but I'm doing it. I'm taking TJ Hawkinson, the Iowa tight end. I, I think this is where his value starts to be proper okay. in the 20s. Good all around tight end. He's a fantastic run blocker for whatever that's worth. Fun to watch. Yeah. Is that okay? Is that fun to watch? Good analysis. Fun to watch. Um, enjoyable watching him in the run game. But a stretch the seam type of guy can work the short and intermediate game. Will Fuller's the deep threat. DeAndre Hawkins, the uber possession receiver. So I think you're starting to round out a pretty good group of playmakers in Houston. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate it there. Hawkinson would have been on my board for 24 at the Raiders. I think that's a position that they could have used as well. But I do think they use those tight ends in the in a quarterback running offense. You know, when you're doing a lot of option heavy stuff, you could do a lot of things with your tight ends from a run blocking perspective, and then from a receiving perspective that really can confuse teams if you have a good one. So I think from that perspective, it makes sense for the Texans. All right, you're up now again. 24 Raiders on the clock left me with, let's see, the highest players left on our board right now. J.J. Arcega-Whiteside, Darnell Savage, Christian Wilkins. I already went defensive tackle, though. Uh, Elkton Jenkins high on the board, uh, but they already have a good center there in Oakland. So uh, this one's tough. I'm not exactly sure where I want to go on this board. Darnell Savage doesn't make a ton of sense after you sign LaMarcus Joyner. Already have Carl Joseph on the roster. I might end up going and reaching for a cornerback here because of the positional value. We have these guys a little lower on our board. It's not a reach, though. But I'm not, I was going to say, I don't think it's a huge reach down compared to the other guys on our board, and especially with what they could, with the need they have there. So I'm going to pencil in a big-bodied, long corner with some perceived upside here. Imani Oruarie out of Penn State. Fantastic athlete. Did the best of any of the corners in the one-on-ones at the Senior Bowl. Very smooth hips. Uh, Some projection did not have the highest grade last season for Penn State, but I I love the traits translating to the NFL. And again, a guy who might not have it year one, but I think can develop into that guy down the road in a value position for Oakland. Definitely like over Warrior. And again, if you're building long term, you know, look, our analytics guys would be saying the whole draft board is going to be QBs and corners in the first. If a guy's a second round corner, move him up to the first from a value standpoint mm-hmm. then so then it's not a bad pick because we put a second round grade on him that's where i'm kind of leaning right now with the next pick at 25 for the philadelphia eagles darnell savage at safety is our in jj arcega whiteside still our top two guys that we're looking at on the draft board i could go arcega whiteside here as well i'm just not willing to make the move on him i guess yeah. pull he, the trigger steve he could be the next alshon jeffrey to replace alshon jeffrey in philadelphia however i'm not going to try to convince you you're like looking at me to try to convince you of something i'm just talking it out okay i'm just talking it out however i might look at corner as well for philadelphia okay so i'm gonna go with a guy that we have a high second round grade on that's david long from michigan he is sneaking into the first round for us as well because look the eagles continue need to continue to build that cornerback depth David Long from Michigan, forced incompletion at a higher percentage than anybody else in the nation over the last three years that's in this draft class. I'm going David Long for the Eagles. I'm leaving a couple first-round grades on the table to go get the cornerback. I love David Long. I think if you bring Ronald Darby back, you, you're not comfortable enough with Sidney Jones, Rasul Douglas, those young guys yet from what we see them on the football field to pencil one of them in and feel great about them as a starter. David Long, in my opinion... Probably the second best man coverage corner in this draft class. Uh, he's a little undersized. I don't love that. But maybe if you want to keep him, start him off in the slot. I think he is that talented in terms of what he can do athletically that that man coverage, even at his size, is going to translate to the NFL. 